two of my basic guide for beginners on how to begin to read music, to take away the mystery of music. Because last time, as we discovered, I showed you that uh, music was simply a map, it's just a map of the keyboard. But we read it from left to right, because it's convenient to read it from left to right, but in reality, it consists of lines which are drawn vertically down through every other note on the keyboard. That's all it is, but we read it that way. Come over the keys, because I had an idea, and I put five stickers over the keyboard. When I teach people for the first time, I put five stickers on. I don't bother too much with the names of the notes. That all comes later, the names of the notes. But in the first instance, I put five stickers, E, G, B, D, F, don't bother telling them that, I just put the stickers there, turn the music on its side, and explain that every line relates to one of the markers on the keyboard. Come over the keys and I'll show you exactly how easy it is to read music. And as we're starting with the, the right hand, just to get you going on reading music, uh, I've concentrated on the one, two, three, four, five lines which are normally given over to the right hand. One, two, three, four, five. And they're marked with what they call a treble clef. And all a treble clef is, is a very posh letter G to show you that that line See it hanging around that line, look, it's just a letter G that hangs around the second line. So we know that that note there is G. And if you can do your alphabet backwards, if that one's G, then the one just to the left of it, next door, is F. And if we turn the music on its side, having marked the E, G, B, D, F, five lines on the keyboard, you see how the music there relates to the notes on the keyboard. So we have the, in between the two bottom lines, we have the space, then we go to the line, space in between those two lines, and then back to that space in between. Use the lines, because those lines on the music are exactly the same as those alternate Space. Now we're on that space there in between the middle line and the one on the left. Ah, now what do we get? We've got the line there, which is B, the middle line, but it's got that flat in front of it. That sign means a flat, and it means that we play the next note to the left. So there's your one on the line. We now need to go next door onto the black note, what they call a semitone down. So we go to the left. Think of it as we're hammering, that looks just like a hammer. The flat hammers the B down a semitone, so we play the B flat note, the black note. And then we go on to the space. So let's take it again, here we go, from the space there. B, but we hammer it down. You can hear the tune, do, me, vu. And now we come to those little fast notes where we start just to the right, on the space look, to the right of the middle line, there's the middle line, go to the right, right again, back down, ah, oh, hammer that B, that middle line, hammer it down, onto the black note, space to a space. You see what's happening is when we turn the music back, I can't emphasise this enough, I want you to read the music the proper way, but to know that when the music goes up in the air, when that goes higher, it's going off to the right. A space to a space, hop over the line, space to a space. And then we come to the last bar. And that final bar stays on the same space. Look on the F space in between the two bottom lines. We go F. And then, oh, it jumps right off the tracks onto a new note, an extra one. We write an extra line. Look, I've done it in red so that you can see it. And it's called middle C. It drops right off. It's just an extra space. So miss a note, play the next line. So there's your E. The space would be D. Look, there's D sitting. It's easy to remember D, by the way. Do you remember that? D for dog. Look, those two black notes. D lives inside the black dog kennel. So D, and that's going to be C. And it's called middle C because it's the middle line in between 11 lines, including five lines for the bass.
cleft for the left hand, but it's, the middle line sits in the middle and it just happens to sit in the middle of the piano as well. So we go from F down to C, miss out two notes, go on to that line. Let's put a line, I'll tell you what, let's write a letter. This is a good idea and put an extra sticker on. Why not? There we go. Boing. There. Now we've got the red sticker there for middle C. So we go off the five lines, down to middle C, and back to that space. It's a good idea when you're reading music to remember the notes that you've just played. Look, see, it, it wobbles. It goes from there down to C with your thumb. Start using some proper fingers. And keep your F covered. Keep that third note, the third finger rather, on the F note. So we wobble, look. We wobble backwards and forwards. Hold it. <laughs> there. And that's middle C. It's an important line to learn. And then we can turn the music back and you can see that middle C sits underneath the main right hand stave, the main treble stave. So sits like it looks like the planet Saturn with its rings around it. Missed it. Try again. You see now that's my fault. I should have held that note with my third finger and just rocked. And that's the reason for using the proper fingers when you're playing. And right now, let's just begin to read one more tune that you all know. And uh, it starts, let's turn the music sequence away, where does it start? Let's line them up again. It starts just to the left of the five lines. And this time, when we hit the space, which is F, look what's in front of that F. There's that little thing that looks like, exactly like a hashtag. If you think of hashtag, you think of higher tone. HT, hashtag, HT, higher tone. And we take the note and we raise it, we go up onto the black note next door, a semitone. So it goes up a semitone. When we hit that one, we go to the right a bit and play what they call F sharp. And then we go onto the ordinary line and the space in between those two lines. Let's go again. Just to the left of the five, F sharp. Ah, well, that doesn't sound right. Oh, when the saints, we sharpen that one. Look, there's the sharp, so we take it onto the black note. And that's because, I forgot to tell you, that whenever you get a sharp on a note in a bar or a flat, any accidental that appears in, a, in one bar, then if that note crops up again, unless there's a little sign which cancels it out, called a natural sign, then you play the sharp note again. So you, if it hits the F again, when it comes to the F, if it's in the same bar, then it has to be a sharp again. It just saves them writing it twice otherwise it would look very messy. So we've got A, and then it goes down to the F sharp. Let's have a look, turn it back, there we go. In that space there, then the space in between, we make it a sharp. We go off the tracks, onto D for dog, D. Back to the F, but this time it's still an F sharp. Oh, when the saints, F sharp, D, stay with the F sharp, because that lasts for the whole bar and then goes off to the left. There we go. Very soon we're going to be starting with putting harmony in, putting extra notes in, so until then I wish you happy music. Thanks for watching. See you next time.